Good morning. Um, okay, so this is uh, work I did with Tobin, who's on the other side of town, um, and a few others, of course, on the help of the community. Um, so, as everything here uh, today, we're talking about confidential VMs, and we're interested in the case where we don't uh, trust the host, and I want to discuss a few approaches for encrypting the uh, uh, guest's uh, disk, and I have no solutions today, so uh, start the community uh, discussions. I also want to refer to yesterday's talk uh, in the Secure Boot mi Microconference from G.O.N. Uh, Yao and Ken Liu from uh, Intel, who also did a talk about confidential um, encrypted disk. So uh, some of these uh, overlap. So the approaches I think uh, we should, um, how, how should we uh, evaluate the approaches is of course, we want confidentiality and integrity. And ideally, if we can make an approach that uh, works not just with one architecture, but with several or all, ideally, and something that would be easy to use for customers, for example, whether they can build and test the image locally without the, let's say, SMP or TDX, and then uh, send it to the cloud and run it uh, securely there. So what's currently available, for example, in uh, QMU is something called encrypted QCOW, um, which is a local disk. It also can be remote and the VMM performs the decryption and you give the VMM the passphrase. So indeed on disk, it is stored um, encrypted, but the host, the VMM has the decryption key and sees all the plain threat plain text um, sectors running uh, to and from the guest. So we consider this uh, uh, not secure because the key is here in the untrusted uh, area. Uh, so first approach uh, for confidential is, uh, was uh, built by uh, James here. Um, basically it, in, it says, let's do the decryption inside the guest in uh, Grub, but we want Grub to be part of the measurement, so um, we build OVMF with a built-in grub. Uh, so there's one package, you load OVMF, it has grub uh, built in uh, in it, and that grub also has a module which allows reading the secret uh -huh. memory. So, um, so uh, nobody has to type the secret, basically you do secret injection in SCV, Reboot secret injection and then um, grab the crits the disk and continues to load the kernel and the ETRD and all the stuff from uh, from there. Um, one moment, let me finish that. Um, uh, so the idea here is that everything measure everything until the unlocking. So OVMF and grub are uh, measured and therefore. If the measurement is wrong, we won't, the guest owner won't inject the secret and uh, uh, will not allow the decryption. And we have kernel and initrd inside the encrypted envelope, so if there's something secret there, um, they're encrypted as well. Um, it relies on the early secret injection, so it's, more, I'd say, more problematic to do in SMP and TDX, where you need, currently, the way to get that station report is later. Uh, in user space. Uh, the grub patches to add this module are not upstream and the combined packaging of this OVMF which includes grub in it as a one unit, uh, we had some trouble uh, getting it accepted to the various parties that need to do that, yes. Just an update. I am grab my planner. I'm going to take these patches for next release, which will happen probably at the turn of, of, of this year. I will be working with uh, James on, on, on these patches. Okay, good. So it might be upstream as opposed to what's written here. Thank you. So second uh, thing we looked at is uh, basically doing it later during boot in uh, initrd. So um, VM starts booting, uh, loads uh, OVMF, 
loads um, kernel, loads initRD, and then during initRD, there's a crit setup um, lux uh, uh, open, and that will do the decryption. And now we need to get the passphrase there. So what we do is in, just before crypt setup, we uh, get the attestation report. Uh, if you need a nonce, uh, so first ask for the nonce, we get the attestation report, and then we send it to the guest owner and receive the passphrase and then do the unlocking. Um, but what we need to have here is we need to measure everything up to that point. So we need to somehow make sure that the kernel and the initRD contain no malicious code that can steal the, the passphrase, for example. Um, so uh, the way we did it but for SCV and uh, SCVS, we have uh, patches. We, it's already upstream in QMU and OVMF um, to include the hashes of um, kernel, kernel command line and initRD inside the guest. So the hashes are included in the initial measurement and they're passed in uh, from QMU. And basically OVMF verifies that what it's going to load uh, with direct boot is what indeed was measured. Um, so that makes it secure for that point. And we also have these uh, RFC patches for uh, <laughs> Similarly, for SNP, for TDX, you basically uh, can use the same approach, but you need to verify that the measurement differently. If um, um, the full TDX support basically says there are these runtime um, registers like TPM PCRs, which can measure, extend the measurement for kernel, for initRD, and so on, you need all the pieces in place in OVMF, in Grub. Uh, in the kernel, and once you have this, uh, you can verify the measurement as well up to the point of uh, unlocking. Um, we see that each um, enclave has their own way of getting the attestation report. So there is one IOCTL in TDX and another one in SNP. Um, so that in its script need to have all these ifs in it. Maybe this can be abstracted away by something like Clevis. I have no experience with it, but I was uh, told that it can do it, uh, or it can be added uh, elegantly there. Um, I'm not sure if it makes sense to unify that, let's say, in the kernel to have slash dev attestation or something. I'm not sure because the actual blobs are pretty different between the architectures. Uh, okay, so we, this is working. Basically, we have tried it. Uh, I just say a caveat that on TDX, we it's working, but we didn't uh, have all the correct measurement checking in place. But for the other, uh, but basically the machinery is working on all of them. And downsides here is um, kernel and initRD are not encrypted. Um, they're basically the host passed them. Uh, it's okay, for example, we are using this uh, scheme in confidential computing where this uh, kernel on initRD basically contains the runtime how to run, sorry, confidential containers, which uh, these initRD contains the runtime of how to start a new container. That's open source, that's public. We have no need to encrypt that. We just need to measure that. Um, but uh, if you have cases where the guest can run, I don't know, up, update kernel or something uh, and uh, get in, and replace the kernel and then the measurement changes, how, how does that uh, play along? Um, so measurement, of course, needs to, it don't, not only includes just the OVMF, it has to include all the parts. It makes it harder to verify. Maybe Peter has a magic solution in the next talk. Um, and hardening is more difficult because there's more um, area which can access the secret and, and do something wrong. Um, this is actually true for the entire life cycle of the guest. So if something in the guest later, even after decryption, something allows the host to, I don't know, 
connect a device that causes a problem and then exposes something, then it's not confidential. So okay, now uh, approaches that look like um, TPM. So in physical TPM, uh, physical machines which have TPM can do full disk encryption or unlocking uh, either script setup uh, and their um, I see patches to do this uh, as well in uh, Grub, earlier in Grub. Um, so can we use something similar in confidential VMs um, to do the unlocking? Um, again, like full disk encryption that we talked about earlier, um, everything is measured and the kernel and interd are encrypted as well. So that's nice, but this VTPM is currently in the air. For SNP, we know that they have um, this mechanism called VMPL, which allows you basically to run part of the guest as a higher privilege from the rest of the guest. So we can have VTPM running in VMPL zero, which has the higher uh, privilege, and the rest of the kernel and the OS in uh, VMPL one. And that makes sure that both the VTPM is not accessible both from the host because it's inside the enclave and also not from the guest OS. So the guest OS kernel, let's say, cannot modify the PCR values or stored inside this VTPM. Um, but outside of SNP, can, can we, do we have an idea how to do this? Um, I don't. Um, well, in TDX, there are ideas of something like another TDVM that somehow has a higher privileges and can look into that uh, the main customer VM, um, but I'm low on details on that. And now the question with VDPM is, um, so in hardware uh, TPM, you have storage, you have a small NVRAM that is persistent. How do you do that? And it's secure, so you cannot, uh, the host cannot read it. Um, how do you do that in cloud? Uh, how do you have something which is uh, persistent and encrypted and, I mean, protected from the host and uh, available to the to the guest at runtime? That's a question. Uh, one other idea that uh, James once uh, raised is if we go back to the first first uh, slide which mentioned uh, encrypted QCOW images. Uh, the problem there was that uh, decryption was done in the VMM which is outside, which is untrusted outside the envelope. Can we have the same thing do the decryption somehow inside the guest but in a level where the rest of the guest sees a plain text disk as like um, the encrypted QCAL that we have today in, in QMU. Um, so somehow move the decryption code from QMU to inside the guest. But uh, where exactly inside the guest um, this code can be, I don't know, when disk drivers, something like that. And how can this uh, decryption layer receive the disk passphrase or uh, decryption keys again? It's an open question, has to be very, very early in the guest because the moment, I don't know, OVMF format will want to read the first sector of the disk, uh, this will need to go into play and decrypt. Um, so it's more questions as I promised than answers. Um, yes, and that's it. And if anyone has any other ideas or uh, ways we should pursue or should not pursue, I'll be happy to. Yeah, so um, from the solutions you showed, I think for standard virtual machines, not for containers, but for virtual machines, full-blown virtual machines, uh, to me it looks like it goes into the direction of having a virtual TPM somewhere in the system, either in with SNP in a, in a, a lower VMPL where it's secure or in a separate um, TE, which you can do with TDX, but also with SCV and SCVES. So um, we've, we already see uh, deployments using uh, such a setup, and I think 
other will adopt that. So for example, the, the uh, Microsoft Cloud, their confidential offering uses a TPM for disk unlocking and... Yes, so we, so I agree. Um, and that's what they do, for, that's at least what uh, they write they do on uh, with SNP. Um, we try to think whether whether it's possible to have this with a secure TPM. So I w it is possible if some part of the TPM is run is executed on the host, then it's not and it's not secure, right? Yeah, the, the the TPM needs to be hidden from the host. Yeah, and on SNP you can do that with VMPs and the SVSM you uh, had in your slides. Um, all others can use a separate um, pure VM and all the hypervisor needs to do is provide a secure channel between the VM itself and the uh, and TPM. The, and the other, and yeah. the TPM. Communication yeah. needs to be encrypted and all, but yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is something we can uh, explore, ID. Whoever was suggesting the use of a secure VM for the VTPM, how do you ensure that that VTPM is running on the same secure host as the host you're measuring. I'm not sure it has to be on the same host, but you want to make sure that um, it's your VTPM, I don't know, that, that you're running it and not uh, uh, someone else who can steal your secrets or... Um... Yeah, the... If the TPN is running in a, in a separate um, secure environment, it also needs to be able to send an attestation report to the virtual machine to, so that the virtual machine can actually verify that it's the correct TPM and that, um, yeah, it's what is, what is expected to run there. Yes, Peter. So with the, with the VTPM in a separate VM, unfortunately, you're using double the resources. So when we have limited, so we have ACIDs and we have HKIDs, we then double that for every VM, and that, that could be a big cost. Yeah, what you double is the ACIDs, but not the memory, and the TPM basically only uses one vCPU, and it... Yeah, it's, it's more the ACIDs, and, and on TDX, the HKIDs that are, that are concerned, because those are, those are much more limited than the memory. I think there's only a couple hundred on, on AMD and, and less on TDX. Yeah. So that's a, a downside for this approach of extra VM for, for each VTPM. Okay. okay, if there are not, no more questions, then I think it's also time to move on to the next session. Thanks, Dov.